We are going to implement and train UNET from scratch. The results will look like this. We will do it on a Kaggle challenge dataset called Caravana Image Masking, something like that. I will put the link to dataset and to GitHub link below to the description. You can just check it out. First, we will go over UNET paper. We will talk about the project structure. Then we will start with the coding. So UNET is originally for biomedical image segmentation, but it is a very popular architecture that has been used for diffusion models too. Main thing you need to know about this UNET is this U-shaped figure. This is the whole architecture. A bit overview about the architecture. We will go over it one by one during the coding. Operations of this architecture will consist of downsampling, what is called this, the left part, sizing it down, and upsampling, sizing it up, and a little bottleneck here. So it is a very simple architecture actually, and very effective one. And like I said, we will go over it more detailly and implement it one by one. As a result for the biomedical images is like this given here. We have like a bit implementation details, like we are explained upsampling, uh, we have the future channel, resolution channels, and that is supposed to give us how to implement it. It consists of repeated application, two to three, two, three to three convolutions, followed by value. We will call it double convolution. You will see it during the coding. We have some training details here and there, some data augmentation. But like I said, the thing you need to know is this. Just keep in mind this, okay? This is the main part. Project structure will be like this. We will have data sets file which we will create a PyTorch dataset to load our data. We will have a unit.py file which will contain the main unit architecture. For that unit architecture we will need it parts. They will be in unitparts.py file. The training part will happen at the main.py. For training we will execute it. And then everything is done if we want to load the model and get a result like the start of the video we will call inference.py. The data has four folders. Originally it has train and train mask folders. Train folder will have the JPEG images and the train mask will have the masking. I selected some example images for manual test and manual test mask. They won't be included in the training. We will just use them to visualize the test results. So let's don't lose time and get into the coding. Our unit will consist of three parts. First of all is the basic building block of double convolution, which is the two blue arrows. They are stack of three to three convolutions and value activation function. Second is the down sample, which is a merge of double convolution and two to two max pooling layer. And the third one is the up sample, in which two to two up convolution output will be fed into the double convolution. As you can see, green arrow to the two blue arrows. We will implement them one by one and explain the process. Let's start by importing our libraries. We will need torch and NN module from torch again. We will implement the double convolution class the double convolution class will consist of the two blue arrows that we can see on the right figure. We will initialize it with input channels and output channels. Since this is a PyTorch class, we will use super init. We will gather the layers in a sequential manner. So one blue arrow will consist of a 2D convolution and a value activation function. Since we are going to combine two, we will need two of these. So we will add another 2D convolution and we will add another value activation function. This will be the sequence for our double convolution. Now we will define a forward pass to this. What we are going to do is we will take an input. We will return the sequential operation by giving it to our variable. Okay, This will take the x, do all these convolution and value operations. Second thing we are going to implement is the downsample part. The downsample part is, as you can see in the right, will be two blue arrows, which is double convolution, and a one red arrow, which is max pull. We already implemented double convolution. We will use that too. Since this is a PyTorch class, we 
will give NN module as argument to the class. We will initialize it with input channels and output channels arguments. Again, super in it since this is a PyTorch class. We will define our double convolution. We will apply a match pooling layer to this. 2D with kernel size 2 and strike 2. So this will be called down sample. This will be the part that you see on the right of the figure. We will have a forward pass. As usual, we will give our input to the convolution first, which is the two blue arrows. The output of that will be given to the pooling layer and we will return them both because we will use them both in the architecture. Now let's move to the up sample. We can see the up sample part on the right of the figure. It is denoted by green arrow and a double convolution which is two blue arrows so let's again we will initially take input channels and output channels we will have the green arrow defined first which is up convolution 2 to 2 we can define it by convolution transpose 2d with input channels input channels divided by 2 kernel size 2 and strike 2 we will have double convolution. We are now moving to the two blue lines. These are the all layers we are going to need for up sample. Now we will do the forward pass. We will take two arguments this time, two inputs, x1 and x2. First, we will take the x1. We will pass it from the convolution transpose 2D, which is self.up, which is the green arrow. After that, we will take the output of that, which is x1. We will concatenate with x2 with dimension of one. We will just return it. These are the main building blocks that we are going to need for the unit. One thing that I want to add is in double convolution part, we added a padding of one. In the original paper, actually, there is no padding, but we want our input image to be the same size as our output image. We will just add that padding of 1. Now we are going to implement the unit itself. First, we will need the necessary torch libraries. After that, we will uh, import our custom building blocks from unit parts. Unit will consist of three parts. The left part will be stack of down samples. At the bottom, we will have a battle neck. At the right part, we will have an up sample section. Let's start. First, let's define the class of unit. Again, we do with NN module. We will initialize it and as input, we will have input channels and we will have a number of classes. We do our super unit. We start with the down sample. Now, if you look at the left section, as you remember, two blue arrows and one red arrow is one down sample. We will need four of those. So this is the first one. This is the second one. 64 to 228. 128 to 256. The last one, as we can see, is from 256 from 512. Now it is time for the battle neck. As you can see at the bottom, it uses two convolutions. We can just use our double convolution function here. We move on to the up sampling. We will have stack of four up samples. As a reminder, one up sample is two blue arrows and one green arrow that we implemented in the up sample function. Now this is our first first up sample function from 1024 to 512 and the second one 512 to 256, third one 256 to 128, fourth one 128 to 64 and up convolution is done. What is left is we will just return the output with 2D convolution. Input channels of 64, since it is the, our last up sample. Output channels will be our number of classes and we will give it kernel size of 1. Now we will define the forward of our architecture. X will be our input. The down convolution will return two values. First one is result of convolution and the second one is result of the pooling layer. We will need them both, so we store them both. When we do our second convolution, we do our third down convolution and the fourth one. Now, since we did all our down samplings, we move to bottleneck. We feed the last 
pulling their output to the bottleneck, we move it to upsampling. With upsampling, we take the bottleneck first and take the result of the last down sample, the result of the convolution part, which is down four. We take up one as input and we move to the down tree. Do it this four times too. By this, we are done with the upsampling part. At last, again, we have to output and we defined our out layer too. So basically, we feed that our last upsample output and we return it. This is the unit architecture. Now, let's check if this works. Let's create a main function here. Define our double convolution. First, let's check if, if our double convolution works as expect, expected. Now we will have an input image, a dummy input image with one batch size and three channels. We will have our unit module. We will feed our dummy image to our unit architecture and we will see its size. So as you can see, when we define our unit, we set the number of classes as 10. So as output, what we expect is one as a batch size, 10 as number of classes, and the same image size, 512 to 512. Another detail is that with our image, we have three channels. We fed three channels as an argument to our unit. Let's print this and check if it works as expected. This is our torch size, the size of our output. So it is working as expected. Now let's go to the unit pi and delete this debugging line. Let's leave it like this. To fit the dataset to our model, we will need a dataset class and we will use it PyTorch again to do this. The dataset we are using is Carvana Masking Challenge something like that. Our data is organized as this. Under our data folder, we have train and train mask. Train contains the images, the main images in the JPEG format, and train mask contains their masks. From them, I chose some images to test our model in the end, and I put them in the manual test. Their corresponding masks put into manual test mask. This is optional, let's do the manual test folders, but because we want to test our model in the end, we will put it. So to implement dataset, we import the necessary libraries, we import dataset from PyTorch, we will use transforms from TorchVision, and we will define our dataset as Carvana dataset. As arguments, we will have a root path, which will point to your data directory, and whether it is a test dataset or not. By default, this is not a test dataset. We assign root path. If it is a test dataset, we want to load the data from the the manual directories, manual test and manual test mask. So what we do is for images, uh, we sort the all image and list under the directory of manual test and manual test mask like this. We list all the files inside that. We add the root path to this. So as a result, this turns us a list of sorted image names with full paths. We do this to mask. And the reason it is sorted is we want the images to correspond to their mask. And this is by their names. So if the name is like start with zero, mask is going to start with zero too. And we want them both at to be the same location in the list. That's why we use sorted. If it is not test, we do the same with the other two directories for our training. Train and train masks. We will need to transform our images. What do we mean by this is we will just open the images, but it is not enough. We have to resize them and we have to convert in them into tensors so that our model can understand. First, we resize it to 512 to 512. And we transform it to tensors. I forgot to mention that our data set has to have three functions at least with this in it first. We will have get item, which will get index. This is about PyTorch, by the way. We will return the item at the index. And the last one is the length, which will return the length of the data set. Now to get item, we will open the image at the specified index. We can do it by image open that we imported from Peel. We have the images list already. We just uh, select the necessary index. Uh, since it is an image, we convert it to RGB. 
with three channels. We do the same for the mask, but we convert it to L, which is for one channel. After that, we apply transform that we defined here. So we resize them, we converted them to tensors, and we return it. We return image and mask. The length, as we mentioned, as the final function that we need, we just return the length of one of the lists, length of our data set. This completes the implementation of data set. We have the model, we have the data set. Now it's time to put them together and train them. Let's go. Let's start by importing necessary modules. You'll need all these. We will import UNET, our UNET module and our data set from our files. We will define our hyperparameters first. I put learning rate 3e-4, but you can put whatever you want. For batch size, I put 32, and I will train it for two epochs. Now the data path will direct to your data. Since I've trained this on Colab, it points to my Colab directory. Now model save path is where you want to save the model in the end. We define our device. If you are using GPU, it will be CUDA. If you are on CPU, it will be CPU. We create our data set. We we pass data path as an argument to our data set. This creates a train data set object. Now we will split it to train and validation. For that we will use random split from PyTorch. It is here. We pass our main data set that we want to split, which is train data set. We pass the fractions in which we want it to be splitted. 0 0.8 will go to the train data set, 0 0.2 will go to the validation data set, and we have to pass a generator. We define the generator here. After that, we will create a data loader. This will help us during the training loop. We import the data loader here. We will give our data set, which is train data set for train data loader. We'll give our batch size as hyperparameter and we will shuffle it. We do the same for validation data loader. Now we define the model. Input channels will be three. Our number of classes is one. After that, we put them into whatever device we are on. If we are on GPU, this will put the model into GPU. We define our optimizer. I used Aiden V. You define it by like model and you pass the parameters and you pass learning rate. We need to have a last function. With all that out of the way, it is time for a training loop. We will iterate our epochs, which is hyperparameter again. For training, we put the model into train mode. We do it like this here. So we are in training right now and we put the model in the train mode. First, our loss is zero since we are just at the beginning. We will iterate the train data loader. Image mask will contain image as the first index and mask as the second index. You may remember from the data set, we return image and mask. We turn them into float. We put them into whatever device we are working on. We do the same with mask, just it will be at the first index. Our prediction will be model image as an argument like this. We get the prediction by Pratt. Until we go here, we have to calculate our loss. So we have the loss function and our prediction and mask. This will return us a loss. We add a loss item, which is the loss value to the overall training loss, which we defined as zero at the beginning. We do the loss backwards. We have to step the optimizer. This make sure that learning is happening. Now we completed an epoch for training. We have to complete an epoch for validation too. To do that, first we put the model into evaluation mode. Validation loss is initially zero. We don't want to calculate gradient and waste resource power, so we put that here when we are doing evaluation. Again, as the training, we iterate validation data loader. Same procedure, we take the image, make it flow, put it to whatever device we are on. We get the prediction, we get the loss, we update our loss. After the all this loop is complete, we will divide our validation loss to the number of of index plus one. I want to get your attention to this. This these things ensures that learning is happening. We didn't put them here because we are just doing evaluation. No need to that. For every epoch, we return the train loss and validation loss to track what's going on. By the way, this is all custom. You can do however you like. After all this finished, we have a model. We want to save that model. To do that, we basically say torch save. And as an argument, we give the state dictionary of the model and the path we are want our to be saved to. This completes our training loop. 
To start the training, you can just go to a terminal and give Python main.py. I won't give it because I don't have a GPU. I will do it on Collab. When your training is done, let's meet you again to use our model. It's time to do some predictions. I won't get into detail of the code here, but we will have two functions. One is for predicting multiple images at once, and one is to predict a single image. They work in the same manner. I will briefly go over them. We define the model here. We load it from the model path, wherever your model is located. We do map location equals the torch device. This overcomes the incompatibility between CPU and GPU. You. We are going to transform our image like in the data set. We transform our image. Since we don't have a batch size, we want to unsqueeze it and add a virtual batch size. We get our prediction with feeding image to the model. We discard that virtual batch size we gave by using squeeze and we move it to CPU and we detach it. And then we want to switch the channels of the image because we are going to plot it. We do it with permute. After that, we have the prediction mask. We again remove the virtual batch size and we permute it to see the mask clearly. We do these operations. After that, we are just going to plot it. We initialize a figure. Since we are just going to have two images side by side, we define the range as one to three. We add pilot for one row and two columns. If it is first iteration, we are going to put image. We will map it to gray. This is optional. You don't have to, but it looks better when you map it to gray. If it is the second iteration, we we will just uh, put the prediction mask and show it. We do the similar procedure for multiple images, which is here. Okay, now we defined our single image path, which is the manual test, an image which didn't take part in the training. This is our data path. This is the model path that I saved my model to. I just feed them to the, to the functions as arguments. Okay, now let's try this. It may take a bit of time. Okay, so this is for multiple images. At the top, we have the original images. At the middle, we have the golden mask. So this is the absolute truth of the mask, original masks. At the bottom are the masks that we predicted. This is for multiple images. And let's see one image. And this is for one image. With this, we completed the inference part two. That's all for today. I will put the code in the description. And see you.